as a veteran who fought in Vietnam. You know, I tell my, my wife all the time that if I had not come back, I would have hoped that there would be somebody sitting in this chair doing for her what we're doing for the families. My name is Johnny Webb, and I'm the Deputy Director for Outreach and Communications within DPAA. We have the responsibility to keep the families you know, apprised of what's happening. And so we also deal with all the congressionals that come in. We also deal with all the veteran service organizations, keeping them updated on our efforts. Well, the first year I did it was 1975, when the Central Identification Laboratory was located in Thailand. Well, I've been on a number of operations throughout the Pacific, places like Papua New Guinea, of course, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, but probably one of the unique places is in North Korea, having spent uh, several trips over 20 times going into North Korea. But when we look at the numbers of 7,700, that are still unaccounted for from the Korean War. 5,300 are in North Korea. If we want to get answers to the families, and we definitely want to get answers to the families, we're going to have to get access back into North Korea. We operated there 10 years. We were successful every time we conducted a mission there. We recovered remains of Americans. And so we need to get back. I keep this small box on my desk, and when I'm having a bad day, I can open this box and pull out the POWMI bracelet. And it's very special to me because this bracelet belonged to a young Army soldier who was one of them that lost his life in Vietnam in battle. Over the years, I got to know his mother and father, and we would talk Every time I would see them, we'd talk about their son. And many occasions he would say, you know, Johnny, I want my son back. I gave my son to the Army. I want my son back. I'm not interested in getting his remains back. I want my son back. And we had that discussion many times. One year, a few months prior to the National League of Families meeting, we had gone out and we had recovered a helicopter crash site where his son was on. And I was pretty sure that we had recovered his son's remains. And so when I went back to the meeting that June, again, I sat down as always and had a conversation with the parents, but primarily with the father. And so again, he told me the same thing, that look, I want my son back. The Army took my son, I want the Army to give my son back. And I explained to him that we'd been out to the crash site and we'd cover remains and he needed to prepare himself to receive his son's remains, to honor his life. And so when it came time, he was, his son had been identified and sent back home. There was a huge outpouring of the public. And I don't know, two, maybe three weeks after, after the funeral, I was sitting in my office and the mail came in and there was a brown envelope. I opened it up and there was a, just a very plain thank you note. It had the POWMI flag on the front. It was from the father and he said, Johnny, I just, I just want to thank you for all that you've done for me and my family and for all the families of the missing to show you my appreciation for what you've done for us. I'm providing to you, I'm giving to you the POW bracelet that I have worn since my son was lost, finally took it off when he came back home. And I want you to have it as a token of my appreciation. And so I keep it on my desk because this is what we're all about. This is what this mission is all about. It's providing those families answers, giving them an opportunity to remember that loved one and to honor that loved one the way that it should be honored. It goes to our creed in the military. Leave no comrade behind. And I believe in that. And we shouldn't leave any of our, you know, our fellow soldiers, Marines, airmen, sailors behind. We need to bring them all back home if at all possible. I'm honored to play a small part in getting these people back to their homeland, back to their families.